with the what? One thing that we've learned in the last four years under President Donald Trump is how to absolutely just call it like you see it, or as most people call it, bullying or talking crazy. Nobody. Nobody can do it like that. Honestly. Nobody's stronger than me. Nobody has better toys than I do. There's nobody bigger or better at the military than I am. Nobody loves the Bible more than I do. Nobody builds walls better than me. Nobody's better to people with disabilities than me. Nobody's fighting for the veterans like I'm fighting for the veterans. Most people who talk like this man end up in a 5150 psych hold for at least 72 hours. But no, he runs the country. There's nobody that's done so much for equality as I have. There's nobody more pro-Israel than I am. There's nobody more conservative than me. There is nobody that respects women more than I do. Whew. But anyways, one thing that we do know for sure is that we do have the Electoral College votes and something that we've learned after one president went one for 59. That's right, there are no current lawsuits out. There could be after this is recorded, but as of this time, President Trump's record is one in 59. I thought I'd cover an interesting topic today. Almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what are you, what are you, look, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call him? What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a name. That's right. Why does Donald Trump, President Trump, have such a difficult time condoning and condemning white supremacy and alt-right hate groups. It's an interesting topic, right? I mean, Trump loves to insult the media. Hundreds and hundreds of miles you know away. That, that's I not an invasion. Should, honestly, uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, let would me be ask, much if better. I'm, if I'm, How much longer should we stay here, folks? Wait, let's see. Who's? I want to find a friendly reporter. Why is this a global competition to you if every day Americans are still losing their lives and we're still seeing more cases every day? Well, they're losing their lives everywhere in the world. And maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me. Ask China that question, okay? When you ask them that question, you may get a very... I'm saying it specifically to anybody. I'm saying it to anybody that would ask a nasty question that's like that. That's not a nasty question. Please question. go ahead. Politicians. Chuck Schumer has felt his wrath. Elizabeth Warren has felt his rants. Of course, Nancy Pelosi and, of course, a gentleman close to my heart, the late great war hero POW and a long line of family who served the late Senator John McCain, who was a POW for over five years in Vietnam. The president denied a new article in The Atlantic that says in a 2018 trip overseas, President Trump questioned why he should go to a cemetery of American soldiers near Paris, saying it's filled with losers and called the American war dead suckers for getting killed. The article also says that when Senator John McCain died, the president told his senior staff, we're not going to support that loser's funeral. As we all famously know, Trump doesn't even like the military as the Atlantic article earlier this year has proven. And of course, his ability to veto the budget for the national defense Oh yes, he keeps threatening it because his conservative, or wait a minute, not conservative, Confederate generals will have their name removed. You know, the slave owners who lost the Civil War, they'll get their bases changed to war heroes like General MacArthur, maybe Triple Nickel, or one of those famous folks that we need to recognize. You know, famous army bases that should be named after famous army folk. I don't know a lot besides General Patton and of course Triple Nickel. I know that there's some other amazing, maybe we should do that and maybe name them after some amazing female veterans. I don't know, anything's better than Confederate slave owners. It has been suggested that we should rename as many as 10 of our legendary military bases. These monumental and very powerful bases have become part of a great American heritage and a history of winning, victory, and freedom. But one thing that we've even seen is the president insult voters. Famously in 2016, he went after you know, people in Iowa and Idaho. In fact, he went after people who have now become his biggest ass kissers, I mean supporters, like Ted Cruz, insulting Ted Cruz's wife. But the one thing that stands out is Donald Trump has never ever insulted or gone after white supremacists. And right proud of my boys, stand back and stand by, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. The fact that Donald Trump has pulled the full Mariah Carey and has claimed to have no idea who David Duke is. 
Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with uh, white supremacy or white supremacists. That's right, David Duke, the Grandmaster, Grand Wizard, Grandmaster Flash, whatever the hell you want to call him, of the Ku Klux Klan, something we all know who the hell David Duke is. This guy went on TV and said, Psh, I don't know who he is. Ah, never heard of him. I will be Donald Trump's most loyal advocate to make sure his nominees go to the Supreme Court. You know what? Saying you hate David Duke is the easiest thing in the world. I mean, it just flows off the tongue like, I hate Osama bin Laden. I hate David Duke. Don't lie and say you, you don't know who he is. Come on. I mean, it's crazy. And why doing some research on this? Because I'm not just up here saying I don't like Donald Trump and he's a white supremacist. Just some things that have happened in the last four years. One, white nationalist hate groups have grown over 55% during Trump's presidency. That's right, 55%. That's an amazing number when you think of it, when we go back to looking at other groups and we look at these groups who have gone out and gone crazy, right? And we've covered this in past episodes that, you know, when President Obama was in, these people went ballistic. Hate groups grew. We're in a battle here in our country to preserve what white America started from the get. And now we're talking about white supremacy, but white nationalist hate groups have grown over 55% during the Trump era. And in fact, <laughs> here's my point, and here's where you'll see it come into attrition. When we first really saw it rear its ugly head, besides in his actions in 2016 and his actions beforehand. But in August 2017, as we're all aware well of, in Charlottesville, a bunch of white guys got together for a really shitty barbecue. They brought tiki torches from Home Depot, put on collared shirts, all marched together and had an issue with anybody who wasn't white. Basically, some psycho wearing a grunt-style shirt hopped in his car and drove through a bunch of people, killing them. Car just plowed through hundreds of people downtown Charlottesville. 15 seconds later, the car shifting in reverse, screeching back down that street to get away. It killed a protester, and President Trump had an opportunity, a real opportunity to get hard and, and say that this was wrong, that this is an atrocity that this is horrible. A person, an American, lost their lives because of a cowardless, nutless, ballless, bunch of pussy-ass white dudes. And what did he say? He did not say what you thought he would say. Instead, he came out and said, What I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other, and they came at each other with clubs, and it was vicious, and it was horrible, and it was a horrible thing to watch. But there is another side. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, or you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. Fine people. Fine people that include murderers and people who punched cops and people who punched women and people of color. Oh yes, we saw them live in a well just this past weekend in Washington DC for we suck and we lost and we're not getting a second term rally where we saw idiots on stage rapping, you know, wearing the stupid ass MAGA hat, jumping around threatening President-elect Biden's life. Oh, that's a popular one. And these clowns are on TikTok. Now, personally, I don't know what all these idiots have to do at the in January, January 20th. I guess, hi, welcome to Walmart is something they're all going to seriously have to consider using as a phrase because their day as an influencer on TikTok or anywhere else where they think they're important because they kissed the president's ass, those days are over. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. It's weird because... The president claiming that these people were fi fine people on both sides. No, they weren't. They're white nationalists. You can't be like, hey, they're great. And if we remember, Trump doesn't always, you know, wait to support them in public and to say things after bad things happen. Sometimes he just retweets them. In fact, President Trump has even retweeted and shared at white genocide TM. Thank God they trademarked that because... Nothing says that you take white supremacy serious like trademarking your shitty Twitter handle. Even during this past debate in October of 2020, President Trump had an opportunity to denounce white supremacy and hate groups. That has even his head, Mr. Wolf, at the Homeland Security even wrote and was released a report saying in October of 2020 they considered Proud Boys a hate group. Nope, he didn't. Instead, when given the opportunity, the president said... 
sure Are you I'm prepared willing to, to do specifically that, but do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what are you, what are you, you look, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. He specifically mentioned the white nationalist group. What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White Proud supremacists Boys. and right Proud, Proud Boys. Boys. Stand back and stand by. Saying that is like breaking up with someone and texting them. Talk to you later. It just doesn't make sense. You know, Trump struggles so hard to say something so easy. You know, like he makes it like he's trying to walk down a ramp or hold his wife's hand. But seriously, folks, of all the Trump scandals in the last four years, white supremacy should have been the easiest to avoid. What could possibly, I mean, and seriously, I don't understand it. It's the easiest thing. Like, we denounce it. We whoop the Nazis' ass. We all know that. Now we got these guys wearing grunt-style shirts and nine-line shirts and these little shitty shirts that they're not supposed to own. None of those brands, by the way, come out and condone it because Chin Ching money and rumored that even grunt-style's leadership wanted to put out a Confederate flag shirt, but some of the smarter people in the room actually said not to do it. True story, folks. I can't make this shit up. That's real. That really was going to happen. I, I wonder this question as we wrap. What could possibly explain why President Trump continues stumbling into situations where racists and Nazis believe that he has, that he has their support? It's weird. I, I don't understand it. Well, we don't have to worry about it anymore because January 20th, President Trump's gone and we bring in a new era, which hopefully will tone down racism and stamp it out instead of inflaming it. That's all I have for you folks today. Make sure we continue to render and just take out this hatred that we have towards one another. We have no place for racism in our country. Many people have fought and died for the fact for civil rights, that we should all get along with each other and look to our brothers and sisters to our left and our right and make a difference. But I leave you with that question again. Why, in the last four years, has President Trump struggled so hard, stumbled so hard to, you know, get into situations where racists and Nazis and these crazy alt-right groups believe that he supports them? As always, I'm Eric Mitchell. Be safe, be strong, be smart, and God bless America.